Hello friends, this is Rahul Mogan here from Treasury Consulting LLP as a Chief Executive Officer and today we are going to upload a very very fresh video on our YouTube channel which is titled as Relative Strength Factor or shortly known as RSF. RSF is one of the techniques which people are using to understand whether the fraud has been happened or not. Although this is a quantitative techniques but still you know uh, sometimes uh, there are a lot of loopholes that uh, are very well available in the RSF so the purpose of this video is to aware you or to let you know that there are variety of loopholes which are available in the RSF which we need to mitigate before applying that so in that regards we are going to present you a video to you and that video is having an excel file which you can very well see right away in front of you and this excel file would be having uh, uh, this excel file would first compute the Benford and then would compute the RSF I know sounding uh, one sounding it seems like that this is technically incorrect that because if we are here to calculate RSF then why we are calculating the Benford but to be honest in my view and the view of the Treasury Consulting LLB is that computing RSF on a complete number or a complete data series is technically wrong because this may not serve the purpose in fact this will defeat the purpose so what we do we are going to in this present the RSF to you you know with, with respect to the Benford so first we compute the Benford and then we'll compute the RSF to you and I, and, and I hope that video would uh, serve a very great purpose to you now what we did we asked our computer now before starting this video we would like to make one thing very clear to all of our viewers is that the numbers in this video which you can see on your screen is having is via a function called RAND. RAND stands for random function. Now see now I put RAND which is uh, bracket, bracket open and bracket close then I got 0 0.60 as a number but suppose I want any number then I do RAND between then I go 1 comma 100 then here I got 44 so whenever you press anything these numbers will change because whatever 20,000 numbers which are there like if you see here F2 you will see the, these are all 20,000 numbers are land functions so random variable so the numbers will change again I hope you went through our uh, video which is on uh, Benford but still let us clarify one thing again to you all people that we had step number one we ask computer to give us 20,000 line items computer given us 20,000 line items and after this 20,000 line items we as a company believe in sanitization now we are not talking about sanitization from a housekeeping point of view we are talking sanitization from the point of view of taking the outliers out so what we did we said to computer we went to computer and we said that we want to use a smoothing technique because sanitization is a housekeeping technique technically it is a smoothing technique we went to computer and said that we need a sanitization technique right now computer said there are variety of that one is average one is geographic one is weighted sorry geometric one is weighted one is exponential which is log natural what do you want I said to computer which one is fine computer said the perfect is log natural or perfect is exponential I asked why because computer said in log is in exponential there is number one which is a parameter like you can see here there is a parameter called which is 0.7 this is what you can see everybody can see here this is a parameter called 0.7 second biggest aspect in, in this is that second biggest is you can create a buffet out of the data now buffet means now suppose you have a data you are not using the smoothing technique so you don't know that exactly how the Benford would work but if you use an exponential smoothing then you always be very well sure that how Benford how Benford would, would, would work for you so what you did so what you did you asked computer how to use a parameter computer said there are three golden rules of using a parameter I said what he said rule number one if you feel that the data is completely unstructured in nature so you yourself not sure that any relevant uh, any any point of view of the structuredness in the data then you should use approximate one which I mentioned 0.98 please be careful which I mentioned as 0.98 
if you feel that the data is somehow structured but you're not sure how much you saying say it is 50 50 game then you should refer this equals to 0 0.5 and if you feel that the data is completely structured which is next to impossible because we do not have that any data across the globe which is completely structured in nature the data which anyways is completely structured so what do you need you will put a value almost 0 or 0 say 0 0.05 they will get that value in all circumstances this exponential smoothing will change because this is an input parameter so suppose here we are assuming that the data is completely structured which is the completely unstructured which is a very very uh, genuine uh, assumption because a lot of times you will feel that the data is not very very structured so what do you do it you put the value say 0 0.98 and once you put the value 0 0.98 what you are going to do you are you are going to get now this number will change because it's a rand number so would be the exponential smoothing those who not know how exponential smoothing work this is the formula for exponential smoothing now few things which we need to remember we are not going to the table above here in the in the exponential how Benford worked because this table was explained yesterday in a separate uh, video which was called Benford we are going to we are going to be more focused here here more focus so what we did Benford is having is number one Benford is all about the pattern of numbers so Benford feel that if number four is getting a lot of occurrence it means there is a situation that number four would be mismanaged number two is having a lot of occurrence so there is a probability that number two is mismanaged and so on so forth so what you did you went to you and and zero is something which Benford do not recognize so what you did now what is the first digit out of 1.1 1.7 this is one now what is the first eight now what is one four one one now let us take an example of zero here now what is the first digit zero zero is not Benford disrespect zero then you go to then then what is the next digit next non zero digit which is 3 and so on and so forth now see the count if the total count of hair which you can see is 20,000 you can very well see here 20,000 you can also see that the total count of hair is also 20,000 so there is nothing which computer is not calculating for you sitting right now now you here now you will calculate the RSF but before calculating the RSF let us have a small uh, demonstration about RSF what exactly is RSF we will create a separate excel sheet and we will title this as rsf simple formula we will increase the size so that people can see here wait a minute here let us change this to RSF. Now, what is the formula for RSF? RSF is equals to, let me write equals to maximum number divide, divided by second maximum number if the complete is greater than 10 then it means there is some fraud if not then please go ahead this is what rsf is all about actually we put an equal here so let us report this equal. this is the formula for rsf but there is a there are two flip sides of rsf which majority of the people do not understand and they, they still keep using number one is that people believe that rsf is all of all is maximum by second maximum and if this number is greater than 10 it means there are frauds if this number is less than 10 it means there are no frauds no treasury consulting llp do not agree with this thought because we believe that every number is having a different perspective so every series any series you will take this series would have this data dependent time dependent situation dependent and fact dependent so we cannot make a common yardstick in data analytics section and we simply say that 
If it is greater than 10, it means there is a fault. If it is not greater than 10, it means that it's not going to have any fault. So we need to appreciate that. So at the place of 3, 10, which you mentioned in the formula, you can use 3. At the place of 10, you can use 4 and so on and so forth. So that is something which we need to understand. This is the first misconception of the RSF. Second misconception of the RSF is that it is only used on a complete series. So we are going to give you the 20,000 numbers and then we are going to compute the RSF. Now this how it works. Now you have this 20,000 number. You know, you have this 20,000 number. Wait a minute, just we are going to hold. You are going to have this 20,000 number. Now this is how people will calculate the RSF. They will say RSF is equals to large equal to F4 comma 1. This is the number 1 digit comma large complete comma 2. So RSF is close to 1. Close to 1. But this is technically wrong. This is technically wrong. Because the reason here is if I replace the F2, you are taking the complete data series into consideration. Now in this data series, you may have an outlier, you might not have an outlier. Even if you, you have an outlier, then this outlier it will lose its uh, uh, potency over the period of time. You have the data which can substitute each other. You will ignore the autocorrelation and there are a lot of other things which the search formula ignore. So what you do, you use the first Benford like we mentioned and you will divide this into the 20,000 part. Now see here, how much are they? You can very well see they are 20,000. Now what do I do? Now this is six digit. You can see that it is only come in six. Now this is second digit, first digit, it will only come in first. Now this is fifth digit, it will only come in fifth. This is third digit, it will only come in third. This is fifth digit, it will only come in fifth. But let me clarify you that there is no mistake which has happened. What we do, we are going to use the formula count if. We will say, oh sorry my mistake, we will do equals to count if. We will select complete. So how much is the count for one? This is 6556. Five, five, we do control V, copy this. How much is the count? You can very well see it is 20,000. Now we'll give a demo. How much is of the one digit which is 6632? Control, control home. Now see this how much it is. It is 6632. It means RSF. It means not a single number which has been uh, basically ignored, ignored by the computer and so on so forth now we divided the entire data series into nine numbers because of course benford disrespect zero so we are not going to take zero into consideration now what we do once we divide it into these and we and we showed in front of you that that the total sum is twenty thousand. now what we did we write it a formula here now see here we write it a formula on a digit one we calculated the msf uh, sorry RSF the maximum number you can very well see now you can see here that this and then we'll calculate you can very well see that and then we will calculate the second maximum now here we go you can see that now this is maximum this is second maximum and this is RSF test you can see here we use a if error formula, if error means that if there is an error, then it will give a blank value rather than giving hash NA because or hash div zero. Because these error values do not hold good. Now what you did, you have the RSF. Now here you write it this formula. 
If the maximum divided by second maximum is greater than 10, then it is frauds as RSF is okay. Now the beauty of this Excel file is that you can change this 10 to anything. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Suppose you change this to 3. Assuming. And here we go. We copy this formula. You can see that there is no frauds. Suppose we change it to 6. Assuming. There is, again, there is one fraud here. Now see here. The maximum is 8.08 and the minimum is 0.90. So the if you divide then it then, then it is uh, RSF coming is 8.99 and we incorporated an input variable of 6. Now using this you can do a lot of client array. Digit 1, digit 2, digit 3, digit 4, digit 5, digit 6 till digit 9. Now third flip side of the of RSF is that it sh we should not or the person who is doing the RSF should not think that if it is greater than 10 or 1 or 2 or the limit which you specified it is a fraud. 99% misconception people tend to feel that the limit which you specified right and it, if it is going out then this is fraud. No this is not. Sometimes it is general also. It is natural also. So take an example. Now suppose central bank is putting some uh, reforms and because of that reforms the pricing are getting costlier and one item which was uh, which uh, costed to client 50 paisa now it moves to 70 paisa it means 70 would come more often but if you do the this uh, rsf on this person who is having 70 numbers then it is going to be difficult it is going to be extremely difficult so what you do RSF is not that you can apply the RSF everywhere. You need to understand that where you can apply the RSF because I still remember RSF is a data analytics tool and if it is if it in the wrong hands then it can do anything. If it in the wrong, wrong hands then it can do anything. So what we did like similarly at 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 you can change the number and all but you need to recheck that exactly if RSF is coming greater than 6 then it's not that it is a fraud, it could be general transaction also. But unfortunately sitting today auditors tends to believe that if it is coming greater than 6, uh, sorry, greater than 10 or whatever number which are given it means it is a fraud. No, that is not how it should not work. And then you very well understand that with RSF and Benford. Together you can do the data analytics at a very good level. I am not saying that there are the other data and analytical tools are worthless. They have their own importance and RSF is having their own importance. But at the same time, we strongly, we strongly need to understand that RSF is something which is uh, highly technical in nature. RSF requires a lot of mind that how you can do so. And uh, what all uh, basically the input and the, and, the, and the output variable you need to take into consideration. With that, we will thank you very much. You are most welcome to contact us here. Our contact details are Treasury Consulting LLP at the rate gmail.com. Our alternate email IC is Rahul Mogan 8 at the rate gmail.com. My mobile number is 9899242978. My Skype ID is Skype Connect at the rate Rahul, which is Skype ID is Rahul5327. We hold our brand, which is Foreign Exchange Maverick Thinkers, which is available everywhere like LinkedIn, LinkedIn FX Club, YouTube channel, Daily Motion, Derivative Groups. Basel 3, Foreign Exchange Academies on Facebook, Skype, Google Group, Google Library and now we are entered into Dropbox as well. Before winding up this video, I would like to stress one fact to each of you. Whenever you are encountering such kind of transactions, which you feel that they may work, they might not work, they are very difficult in nature and so on and so forth, then you are welcome to contact to uh, our team you are welcome to contact to me and uh, let us know how we can uh, resolve it with this we say thank you to you and uh, before uh, saying bye to you we would like to request you to please visit, visit our youtube channel which is foreign exchange memory thinkers which holds more than 140 technical videos it's very simple and absolutely free you just need to go to UA, uh, you just need to go to youtube and type rahul magan and youtube will take you here with this, we thank you and this side it's strategy consulting. Thank you very much.